at Cock 45 here, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton, Alvin York, Davy Crockett, uh, Aretha Franklin, I think, and Elvis even. Yeah, the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Oh, they were from Tennessee, but not Middle Tennessee necessarily. And we welcome you here to Tennessee. Now I know, speaking of that, that uh, you know Dolly, I think, is you know maybe politically upset a few people in recent years uh, and all that. I, as I'm not sure about her, I I've always liked her, still do. And I did notice in recent uh, weeks or months, people commenting on how when uh, they're giving at the award shows and things, like she was presenting with somebody, another group, and uh, they were all uh, getting real political and she just kept her mouth closed. I think generally speaking, she does keep her mouth closed about that sort of thing, but occasionally she doesn't, maybe. so. And then two, people have different politics. You know, John and I don't get into party politics and. I have serious problems with uh, both major parties, you know, and uh, as I've told you many times, I lean libertarian on most issues, and uh, you know, so I and and we have viewers, you all, from various political parties as well, and I, I guess I think John and I can relate to to people from different parties uh, a little bit, maybe more easily, because uh, we're kind of in the middle in a lot of ways, and. Uh, I'm a liberal about some things, and I'm very conservative about some things. That's why I don't feel like I have a home, so to speak, you know, with the major parties. And I, some of you probably feel the same way. So freedom is the most important thing. Uh, and, you know, this seems like both parties, major parties, uh, as I've said before, I'm not sure who is more restrictive of our freedom, the very far left or the very far right sometimes. You know, there's a lot of folks on both extremes that want to control you and, and me. So, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> it's good to talk to you. Uh, I wish you'd speak up more. You're so quiet. I mean, we're out here in the woods. It's just us, you know, so it's not a problem, you know. Squirrels don't mind. So what was I going to talk about? Was I going to just ramble? for 40 minutes or so. Nah, I probably will. And again, if you're new to our videos, you clicked in on this thing by accident, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry. I'm not shooting anything and it's just me talking. And it's a chance for me to, to demonstrate to our many viewers, at least the ones who watch these, how utterly insane I really am, yeah. Because I'm not talking about a firearm. Well, I might talk about one I've got on my hip. I always have to be armed, you know, here on the compound. I wouldn't venture out here unarmed, would you? You've seen some of the zombies we've encountered out here over the years, many of you. They're not all made of iron. So, but anyway, uh, I'll talk about it. Don't let me forget to mention this firearm I have on my hip. Because you've not seen it yet, I think. Well, let me go ahead and tell you. Uh, you know, went to Columbus, Ohio and uh, to the rally, Second Amendment rally up there, uh, sponsored well by, the, okay, I forget, I shouldn't say, Ohio, Ohio Carry, uh, Ohio Gun Owners Association, I think it's called, and there's another couple of you know, organizations. Ohio really uh, is buzzing with activity when it comes to uh, you know, organizations at the state level. It's great, and it's why I've advised you for years I mean, ever since we've been doing this in, in vlogs like this, the radio shows I did, I have a hundred radio shows, remember, some of you? They're still posted if you've got the guts to go listen to them. But I have always advised join the NRA and join your state organizations, you know, and anybody else you can, you can afford to join. Those state organizations are very important. That's where the battle, you know, uh, ends up being a lot of times, right? So that's what they're battling in Ohio. And uh, they put that rally on that uh, turned out pretty successful, I think. You know, it's so hard to get a lot of people out. It shouldn't be. It should not be. But it's hard to get a lot of gun owners out to these Saturday rallies. I know a lot of people work Saturdays, but not, not everybody. And I've never fully understood that. And it's disheartening to some extent. 
because you need to have a good turnout if you're going to have one of those. And they had a good turnout. I think it's around 700, I believe, was the count. Uh, the real count, you know. <laughs> you know how the media does sometimes. You know, if they don't like your cause, then you might have 500 out there, and they'll say there were 30 people. You know, uh, and if they like your cause, you might have uh, 30 people out there, and they say you had 5,000, right? So it just depends. But uh, it was a great rally. I enjoyed it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was just great to see so many people out for that cause and, uh, and, uh, and, and wearing guns, many of them, really dangerous. Uh, got to go inside the, uh, Colum let's see, the Ohio State House there in Columbus, and that was pretty neat. That was pretty neat. Uh, it was funny because I left my uh, pocket gun in the car, my pocket knife, my extra ammo, everything, because I knew I was going to want to dart in there, and I didn't know what the security situation was like. Uh, but I wanted to see the inside, and wow, I like to never got in there. I mean, I had, I just about had to get naked to get in that building. Good thing I did leave all that stuff in the car, because I had some, something with some cellophane on it here and there. Wow, talk about <laughs> serious security. I emptied all my pockets about eight times, and jacket pockets and everything. Finally got in there. It's pretty cool, because Lincoln, you know, was laid out in there uh, on his trip uh, after he was assassinated, you know, back to uh, Springfield, Illinois, I guess, yeah, and so it's this a really neat old building. But anyway, it was a great cause. It was a, a great uh, event for a good cause, and uh, met a lot of you there, a lot of you, for a period of several hours, and uh, it was kind of neat. Kind of neat. I enjoyed that. Enjoyed it. Uh, it was an expensive trip for me, not just the gas and the motels, but I got there on. Friday afternoon and hit a couple of gun shops, yeah, cool, cool gun shops, Gun Envy and uh, LAPD Arms. And uh, there's probably others there who are great gun shops, but uh, it was really interesting to, to go through those shops. And I happened upon this in one of them, Envy, Gun Envy, Model 29. See, we're loaded for zombies here. We're always prepared. Model 29, pit and recess, six and a half inch barrel, the actual Dirty Harry special, okay? And I couldn't turn it down. Uh, I've got a weakness for these old uh, pit and recess Smith and Wesson. I guess I don't really have that many of them, maybe four. You know, some people actually collect them, that's their big collector's uh, item. The reason I like them is uh, even they're collectible for a lot of people, no matter what age they are because they're kind of the early, the vintage, the way they were made, you know, originally and all that, uh, the pin barrel and the recessed uh, chambers and everything. But uh, for me, they're also special because when I got into buying firearms out of college and the job and could actually collect a little bit, shoot, and the Smith & Wessons I bought, guess what? In the early 70s, they were like this. They were pinned and recessed. They looked like that. You know, the controls. That, I mean, that's that's what I was buying and trading and shooting. You know, so kind of like my dad, he had a couple of old uh, Model A Fords he had restored. Well, he didn't just see some pictures of old cars in a magazine and think, oh, those are cool. I think I'll get into old car restoration. No, it's because he grew up with them. And those were the first cars he drove and owned. <laughs> so, uh that was, you know, made a little more special. So anyway, Model 29, you'll see it in a video. You know what, I'd better, better load it because I you never know what zombies might be out here, okay? Now I've got those down in my pocket, I can't get them out. Uh, but anyway, I, I like these old things. And uh, Dirty Harry carried one of these. You know, they, they talk a lot about how, oh, you know, we really had a 41 Magnum, but I've done a lot of reading, talked to some other people who have done a lot more research even than I have, said, yeah, they did have a 41 Magnum there early on, but uh, in the movie, in the scenes, it was it was mostly the 44s. They actually had trouble getting 44s at that time. Hard to imagine, uh, but they weren't that popular until after the movies. And, uh, and what else was it? They, uh, yeah, they even had an 8 and 3 eighths. This is the one they used in the movie, but they had an 8 and 3 eighths that actually, because they had a hard time getting them. Uh, 
that these were some of the promotional things, I believe. But interesting uh, how it became so popular after that. But with the snap mine. There we go. So anyway, uh, it was an expensive trip for me, although I got an incredible bargain on it. That's why I couldn't leave the shop without it. And I appreciate the guy who had it there for sale on consignment. Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so yeah, Columbus was great. One of the reasons I wanted to, to get on air, I haven't been on shooting the breeze lately, and I wanted to, to talk to you. I'm getting a lot of messages and uh, petitions sent to me, videos and that kind of request. Of course, that's that's every day uh, with you know a large audience and large following, which we uh, we greatly treasure. You know, we appreciate y'all being out there. But I'm inundated, you know, with requests and different things, and uh, you know, to do a video on this, or there's a, you know, there's a, a, a gun banning law being proposed in Idaho or wherever it is. You know, there's always uh, there's one every day, and and uh, you know, and folks want us to to get on that or something. Well, I can't do that really. Our contribution primarily to the for the Second Amendment is doing videos and getting people addicted to firearms. If we get enough people addicted to firearms like I am and many of you, the problem will take care of itself as they become more and more mainstream. And I think that has been one of the things that has saved us in recent years. There are so many people, they don't give up their firearms. They've just gotten into this. They enjoy it. Hey, you know, whereas maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, they were not really into firearm, didn't have a firearm maybe. Once you get a firearm, you go to the range, you want another firearm. And you might want to try a shotgun now. You want to try a rifle. And then all of a sudden the politicians are trying to take them away from you or your neighbor who is of a different political persuasion or whatever or uh, philosophy. And you are more resistant. You get active. You join gun rights organizations. You know? So, I mean, that's, that's kind of our main drive. Although we've done quite a few videos talking about this and trying to, to rally the troops, but uh, we're, we're not going to do that every day. We're not going to do it every week. Okay, my advice, my uh, my uh, message to you is uh, is to stay informed. Please stay, especially during these times. Stay informed. Stay aware of what's going on in your state and nationally and stay on the alert like always not just now just because there's some recent event that's brought this all you know back into the media mainstream media and, and otherwise you should always be uh on guard you should always be active in doing all the things that we've been advising you for years okay this i mean this is a, a daily uh mission for you and me all right uh, always in, be in contact with your representatives. Let them know how you think. Always join as many gun rights organizations as you can afford. Okay, write, uh, do videos. Uh, you know, anytime you can preach to the non-choir, I guess we could say, uh, do it. Uh, set a good example. Things we've been advising you uh, since the beginning. You know, one of the things we want to continue to do, everybody, is just be a representative for the shooting community. Be a responsible representative and make your voice heard. And don't be afraid to let people know you're a gun owner. You're a responsible gun owner. You're a law-abiding citizen. You're not going to have any of this gun banning, you know. You're not going to be restricted because somebody can't handle it any more than you're going to quit having that glass of wine in the evening or that beer you know I'm, I'm a good example of that i uh, i hardly i've said this before I, I i've gotten where i don't drink much at all uh maybe i'll have a beer tonight i don't think i have any <laughs> but uh, i mean i enjoy a beer occasionally it's kind of weird but i just don't uh i forget about it but i'll have a glass of wine or a beer occasionally am i responsible for all these idiots getting drunk and killing everybody on the road yeah, what, it used to be the number was 55,000 alcohol-related deaths a year. I, I just That's still in my mind from back 20, 30 years ago. I think that's gotten somewhat better. Now the drunk driving, the penalty and all that kind of stuff is, is more awareness. But it's still, I don't know, it's probably half of that. I don't know what it is exactly. But there are so many alcohol-related deaths, not to mention people who can't handle it and become alcoholic 
he beat their family up, you know, uh, divorces are the results of so I mean, alcohol has caused, it causes so many, uh, uh, so, so much ill in our society, okay? And I'm not anti-alcohol. I enjoy it occasionally. Uh, but I'm not responsible for that. I'm not responsible for those people that get drunk and get killed or kill other people because alcohol is out there. There's stores in every town. You can buy beer at every corner. You can buy liquor in every town, okay? Yeah, that's, that, that's not my uh, fault, the fact that I enjoy beer or, and that I want it to remain legal. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we ought to start approaching it from that, that standpoint. There's all kinds of analogies that we, we uh, pro-Second Amendment people use. Uh, as counter arguments, and I still think alcohol is one of the best ones. Some of them are kind of lame, you know, when we just talk about cars. Well, you know, people die from car crashes, we're going to ban cars. I don't know, some of those get kind of shallow, you know, kind of, we can't maneuver without a car. Uh, I would advocate we can't have a society without the Second Amendment and firearms either, but still, that, that gets a little lame. I think, I think alcohol is a good analogy. Tell me if I'm wrong, because I mean, it's not, there's nothing in, in the Constitution about us being guaranteed the right, you know, to, to drink or anything. Not from that standpoint, maybe it's not, but, but I think it is uh, a good uh, analogy because there's, there is a lot of death, you know, caused by alcohol and ruined lives. And then also because um, a lot of those very people who hate firearms, I mean, the, the most devout gun banners, they would not want to give up their alcohol. And uh, they're definitely not going to want to give up their alcohol. So I think it's a good argument from that standpoint to, to kind of counteract or bring it up because uh, they know that so many people are killed every year and lives are ruined and the alcoholism and a lot of the people on the street and street people, they're alcoholics and everything. So, you know, maybe, maybe we offer a trade. Look, uh, guess what? We'll give up our guns, you give up your alcohol. But they wouldn't go for that, would they? Well, I wouldn't want to do that, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, another random thought. You know, when I sit, I, I can be fairly random to begin with, but when I'm sitting in the woods, pondering the universe, there's no telling what I'll, I'll come up with. <laughs> I think mainly we need to be, uh, but yeah, back to my point again. Uh, uh, that I veered off of, imagine that. Um, uh, we're going to keep making videos and doing what we do, and we're going to, you know, do things like this. And, and John and I like to do a vlog together occasionally, but we're not going to run to the camera every time there's another bill proposed, okay? And I can't share everything, I, I just can't. I mean, it's, uh, I know the fact that we have a large audience, it's just tempting to, well, oh, no, Hickok would do this, just think of the effect he'd have. If you do this, just think of the effect he'd have. He's got that big audience, just think what, what he could do if he would do this or if he'd do a video on that. If he, well, if we did all of those things and, and, and went by all the requests and all the things that, that are suggested every day, we wouldn't have a large audience. It would be a different channel. You know, I mean, it's kind of the way, it's kind of weird, you know, it's like the irony of it and everything. But anyway, I uh, just wanted to mention that. Uh, mainly, we just got to stay stay on top of things, and and be aware that the media is, is most media is, is against us. Okay, I mean they're they're against the, at least our Second Amendment cause. Uh, I'm talking you and me. They're against us, uh, and so we need to be aware of that. Uh, media always has an agenda. Of course, all media, whether it's us. YouTube videos, uh, whatever it is, whether it's MSNBC or Fox News or CNN, you know, any outlet, any any blog you follow, no matter what it is, there is an agenda, okay? And it's your job, it's my job to see through, think critically, and perceive what that agenda is so that we're not, because we are influenced by what, what we absorb, we don't want to be influenced in the wrong direction, you know, unhealthy direction, or be fooled. Okay, we don't want to be fooled. Uh, our agenda. What's our agenda? Our agenda is we want you to watch, of course, what we're doing. 
Uh, we want you to support gun rights. That's the biggest agenda right there, okay? And we want to keep doing what we're doing. So obviously, the bigger audience we have, the easier it is to do things the way we want to do it and however we want to do it. Yeah, so there's no big secret there. Yeah, nobody does anything like this uh, hoping for a small audience, okay? We love having a large audience because it is in it. We didn't go down any of those uh, dangerous routes early on. Didn't need to, had no desire to, didn't get in anybody's pocket, you know, early on. And because of that, once we got it, we, we had a pretty big audience there after a few years. And so then, especially then, it didn't, there was no temptation to do that. We didn't have to because we had a large enough audience. We could get general support for what we do and it's worked out beautifully. So the bigger audience that, that we have or anybody has, the easier it is to do that, you know, to stay out of conflicting pockets, put it that way. You know, as we remind you, we don't, we don't review anything that, that, uh, that we get support from. You know, we don't review ammo. We uh, don't review gun rights organizations. We don't review, uh, well, safe makers. We get a little support there. We don't review, uh, what's another one? Well, gun shops, yeah. No, we get help from Bud's Gun Shop. Anyway, so we are, we're dedicated to that. If you're new and you don't know that yet, I and mean, that's one of our primary uh, missions, our mission statement or whatever. We, uh, we only want help from something that doesn't conflict with what we do. And it's something we believe in, of course, you know. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, uh, that's because we have a large audience. It works out that way. You know, so much of gun media uh, on TV and just everywhere. You know, it, 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 you know, the, you know, you watch a show, and I'm not going to mention names or anything. I don't even watch those things anymore. But you know, they're uh, they're they're making a big deal out of the newest Ruger rifle or whatever it is, and then here comes a big Ruger commercial. You know, supporting that program or whatever it is. Well, is that going to be an honest look at whatever it is? You know. Uh, so anyway, you know how it is. But again, I don't fault, I don't really fault that media, that maybe as much as you do, even though we avoid that like the plague, because uh, I, I know my entire firearms life almost, that's just the way it has been. That's just, you know, you can't have a TV show, you know, you're gonna just pay for it out of your own pocket. You're gonna get, who you gonna get? Uh, you're gonna get uh, Wendy's to sponsor it? Probably not, because so many of those companies are afraid of firearms. They don't want to offend anybody on either side. So it's hard to get sponsors that are not in the firearms world. You know, so it is tough. Uh, so a lot of things actually, hunting shows, I don't watch that much, but you know, they're always sponsored by the stuff they're using in the, in, in the show, aren't they? Most of the time, whether it's their camo or their duck call or whatever it might be, you know, so it's, you know, it's just, it's just hard to do that, you know, without. And, uh, and, and we're fortunate that we have been able to, to avoid those uh, pitfalls. So, uh, so whatever, you, whatever you think of us, whatever you wish we wouldn't support or get support from someone who support, whatever it is, there's no conflict, okay? If I want to badmouth a Smith & Wesson revolver, I can do it. Or a Ruger revolver or an m and or a... Or a uh, who else makes guns? <laughs> a, uh, okay, turn my, turn my brain on. Uh, there's a company I'm trying to think of. It was right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, gosh. Wow, it's been a long day. But anyway, whatever, whatever the firearms are, uh, you know, we can be honest about it and uh, it will always be, if we're still doing this, okay? So anyway, there is an agenda. Uh, everybody has one. And it's our job to see it and see through it, be critical thinkers uh, about it. Maybe the agenda doesn't bother us, but at least we need to be aware of it, okay? People these days will do anything to get clicks, to get views. Do, you, do I have to tell you that? The clickbait you see and the crazy stuff. Everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. And and so it's, it's just you know, people go to, to, to incredible ends to, to get that. And sometimes it's just being crazy outlandish, crazy obnoxious, uh, lying, uh, just attacking something that everybody likes, you know, uh, or jumping on the pile, attacking something that everybody hates. Uh, 
having a different take on stuff, uh, something unusual. Everybody's trying to think of a different way to look at. Yeah, you know, it's like the sports talk shows. You know, uh, ESPN or on the radio, different shows you see. They're always looking for a. a they call it a take. They call it a hot take. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of it, isn't it? They, they're they're trying to get the callers when they call in to have a different take on things, make the show more interesting, right? What's your take on this, on the Super Bowl, whatever it might be? And that's just become uh, common usage. We don't even think about it now. It's just uh, your take. Get a hot take. We, yeah, that was a great. And they'll tell the caller, that was a great take, man. You call back, you know, because they, they, they looked at the situation differently somehow. In case of law, that's legitimate, of course. But it's just like doing videos or doing anything. Then so people are sitting around in order to get attention, to get on air, to get a lot of views, to get clicks, whatever it is, a blog or whatever it is, then you need a different take. You need an interesting take. You need a contrary point of view. Okay, something that other people haven't thought of yet. Okay, haven't seen yet. Well, what does that breed? Think about it. It breeds people sitting around like me thinking, okay, what could I do to get attention? What could I do to, uh, to get more clicks? I, uh, everybody thinks this way. It seems like most people think this way about that topic. Let me come up with a different way of looking at it. Everybody seems to like this guy. Let me throw out some negative stuff about that person. Or nobody likes that person for whatever reason, maybe legitimate reasons. Let me do a video or do an article and my title will be so-and-so is actually a lovely person. That'll get clicks because everybody hates that person, you know, or vice versa. So when you have an environment where you get attention, literally, and you could even become famous, or having a different way to look at things, whether it's legit or not, <laughs> or criticizing, you know, something that really is almost beyond criticize, criticism, you might become popular, famous for doing. There was a talk show host came to Tennessee a few years ago. I don't mention name. He does a good job actually, but I mean, he was wanting to. I because I listen to sports talk sometimes. I mean, every every day it seemed like it was a rant on why the titans coach should be fired or some local college coaches should be fired and some player was horrible I and mean, most people thought he was pretty good i mean that was that was his take on everything well, wow it's just kind of the mr negative well it, it sold it did well i think he does well you know so this different take on things you got to watch that here i am like a like a grandfather advising, <laughs> but it's just these are just things that I notice about society and about media that uh, I just I just wonder if everybody notices that. That's kind of my cause. Maybe everybody does, and I'm just being uh, stupid for even bringing it up. But I'm not sure that a lot of people realize that that so much of what we see in the media or on YouTube or in blogs, the internet, or an MSNBC, or Fox News, or seeing it, name any, any media outlet, uh, and what you see from hour to hour, okay, posted, and, and news stories, news stories, anything that goes up for consumption, for us to see, to view, to read, uh, that's part of the agenda, getting our attention, getting us to is to, to get past the headline, right? I mean, and, that, and that's how you do that with something dramatic. Uh, so I don't know, in a lot of ways, I think we've dumbed down the world because that's, that's all we can think to do. And to compound the issue, everybody is their own publisher now. So you know, like on what is Facebook or YouTube or name all the various uh, outlets, then Everybody has a chance to get something out there. Now, there's no gatekeeper. So I could, I mean, I could create three more YouTube channels. I just have the one, you know, John is, we have two or three that he works mostly with. And they have one Facebook page. I could create some Facebook pages. I could create uh, some more YouTube channels and, and they could just focus on dramatic stuff, you know, and try to, you know, get a million subscribers, you know, just, just from, I don't know, a different take.
How's that? Seeing things differently. Uh, finding somebody that most people like and just criticize the heck out of them. You know, pick them apart. It wouldn't even have to be real, you know. I could, I could come up with all kinds of cool topics, you know. Elvis was a murderer. <gasps> really? Elvis was actually uh, transgender or something, or just, just make up stuff, you know, to get attention. You know, Elvis really couldn't sing, you know, or Elvis attributed his singing voice to his first dog, or I mean, I just make up stuff to get people to click on it, you know, so I, I just worry that people don't, uh, well, I don't lose sleep, but I, I just wonder, you know, if, if, if that's as obvious to a lot of people as it is to most of us, hopefully most of us. <laughs> that that's what media is all about, getting our attention. Think about how much substance there really is, right? Not a lot. <laughs> anyway, we don't want to be swayed by stupid stuff in the media, wherever that media comes from. And I'm not talking about the mainstream media. I'm talking about any media, whether it's our YouTube videos, anybody else's YouTube videos, anybody else's blog, you name it. Whether it's in the firearms world or it's in the race car world or whatever the heck it is everybody's trying to get attention and they're they're working overtime to do that and so i think you get consequently some things that are just not legitimate at all because there's there's clicks to be gained there's views to be gotten you know money to be made you know whatever so uh fame to be gotten all right so anyway i'm probably going too long aren't i I'm always going too long. I'm sorry. Oh, man. What else? Do I have anything else I wanted to talk to you about? Probably not. Uh, just remember, we're always in this fight, though, for gun rights. And uh, it never really ends. It never really ends. Uh, we can't let up. Can't let up no matter what. We, uh, we just have to do things right and uh, continue to, to, to vote. And please register if you have not and vote let your representatives know you vote that's pretty important a lot of people I, I hear at least that a lot of young people are not you know voting really need to do that okay important stuff important stuff and then communicate with them uh, let them know you're voting and how you're going to vote and what your votes based on hate to be a one issue voter i know many of us do uh, as i've said before though you show me somebody who doesn't really support the Second Amendment, and I'll show you somebody who probably doesn't support other things, uh, who probably doesn't agree with me on most things. Okay, it's it, it's a good it, it it's a good barometer for me, really. You show me somebody who 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 wants to question the Second Amendment, the validity of it, gun ownership. I'll show you somebody who who. Who doesn't want a society that's as free as I do, as I want? Okay, they're a little concerned, and they also think, generally, that we can make a safer society by uh, by limiting firearms ownership, and that we could actually ever, ever ever keep these horrific things from happening by outlawing half of the guns or something. You know, like that's going to happen with 300 million firearms out there. So it's a it's a fool's errand to think that, that you can have really any effect. As many people have pointed out, that Jenny, genie is out of the bottle, really. It really is in this country. That's why we have to protect the schools. We have to protect gun-free zones with other guns or bulletproof glass or whatever we have to do. I know it sounds horrible, but that's just what we have to do. You're not going to get rid of the guns anytime soon because people like me and you are going to fight against it anyway. So that's not going to happen in maybe hundreds of years. So you got to protect the schools. It's just it's as simple as that and, and, and do it other ways, you know, because you know, people can find a way to find a firearm or a, make a bomb or whatever they want to do. So we've got to protect the kids and we've got to get rid of these stupid uh, gun-free zones. And we need to let our politicians know about that. You know, it's just that simple. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, I had a thought and I don't know if it's, um, I don't know, maybe do a Facebook posting about it or something. I, you know, this big march on the March the 24th, uh, is, which is really is going to be, it's on Washington, right? It's going to be 
basically an anti-gun march. You know, it's supposedly like the events in the last week or so to uh, to do something about the school violence. You know, but it's really it's about gun violence, which is which is really. Uh, uh, gun control. Anybody who talks about gun violence, even uses that phrase, they they want gun control. It's that simple, you know. Uh, none of my guns are violent. Uh, that's that's just code for gun control. All right. I just wonder. I might make a, uh, a song with John about that. We need to maybe do a posting or something, encouraging people to uh, to join another gun rights organization on the 24th, right? <laughs> what do y'all think? Maybe, no matter what you join, not, not again, promoting NRA, but just whatever. If you already belong to NRA, on the 24th, go online or call, join another one, Gun Owners of America. If you already belong to Gun Owners of America, join another one, whether it's the Second Amendment uh, Foundation or the, the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership, you name it, or the NRA or whatever, uh, join it. You know, like maybe if, if we had enough of us to uh, to do that, it's, I don't know, just kind of a combat it, you know, I don't know. So uh, anyway, I encourage you to do that. Let's put it that way. If you don't hear anything else about it, just I encourage you to do that. If you have a, an idea, something like that, maybe it's it's time is getting close, of course, but the 24th is this Saturday, actually. Hopefully this is posted before 24th. But uh, I think that would be a great thing to do for us or our side because I've just been seeing this stuff in the news and, you know, wishing that uh, that, that we could get the publicity they get, you know, for a march on Washington or a march on whatever. All the new, most all of the news media participates, you know, if you're gonna have an anti-gun march, a gun violence march, right? So, I don't know. Like I was saying earlier, I think, the way I combat a lot of that is, I'll send another hundred bucks, you know, to the NRA or something. I've done that over the years and the decades, or join, you know, for some friends of mine, or or do something to contribute. Send another hundred bucks to the Gunners of America, whoever you want to send it to, but something like that. Uh, rather, as we sit and watch, you know, as we sit and watch all the publicity that the, the anti-gunners are going to get on Saturday. Uh, maybe we should just go online right at that time and contribute or join another gun rights organization, you know, or something like that. Just a thought. Just a thought. We've got to keep the fight going. So anyway, uh, it's a shame that it's it comes to this, but it, it, it never ends. You know, it's been going on for many, many decades. Uh, I can't think I said earlier, uh, it's, it's like Groundhog Day for me over and over again. You know, it's just, it just really is. Uh, it's why you can go back through the years and there'll be these videos that we've done, the one, the, the uh, media versus uh, gun culture or whatever. And I mean, it's, it's, I, you know, I, I look at that video and I think, wow, did I do that yesterday? Oh no, that was five years ago or well, that was six years ago or three years ago. It's, it's just, it's crazy. And uh, it's a shame we can't trust the media. It's a shame we can't even trust the government, you know, uh, like we'd like to. I mean, we have to, to an extent. I've never been into conspiracies and that sort of thing. But wow, and, uh, you know, we used to, you know, they say we lost our innocence after Watergate, you know, with uh, uh, Nixon and Watergate. Uh, and in Vietnam, we really lost our trust in government. Well, I didn't lose all my trust in government. Those were, there were some bad decisions and some unfortunate <laughs> things back then, but you know, you could really lose your trust in government in the last, whatever, five, six, seven years. When you think about how now, which we have pretty much discovered and uncovered beyond question that we have major government agencies like the IRS targeting people of one political persuasion, you know? And the same with the FBI, it looks like. I mean, these are, for, for whatever else you wanna say about the IRS and the FBI, I mean, you, you always assume that they're always on the up and up, you know? I mean, you, no one wants to pay their taxes, but you just assume if you got audited, it was random, generally, or if or whatever the situation, but it's pretty much the case that the IRS was targeting people who were uh, like with conservative groups or whatever. And uh, 
And then the FBI kind of the, doing the same stuff, you know, uh, after certain political parties, part of, uh, politicians, and it wouldn't matter which side they're, they're favoring, it's atrocious. You know, if they were targeting, targeting liberal groups or liberal politicians, it's just as bad. So it, it's hard to trust, you know, it really is. So it, all the more reason to get out and vote, and it really is. So sorry I haven't talked more about firearms today. Uh, I guess maybe I could wrap up with some more firearms talk. What guns would you like to hear about? I like these old guns. I like those new firearms. Uh, we're gonna do some videos. This, we've been doing several videos uh, that uh, we did the, the new E, EC9S, okay? <laughs> I confused the LC9S, the EC9S. Uh, we did that, the kind of the economy version of that firearm from Ruger uh, this past week. Guess what? Did a Taurus, I'll tell you all about. The uh, 709 Slim, okay? Shot that. You'll be seeing a video on that in the future. Going to do some, a uh, couple of classics. Going to do some black powder coming up. The weather changing. You can't tell by looking at the trees, but yeah, we've been getting some nice weather. So, got a couple of muzzle loaders that you've not seen yet, and I'm anxious to get them out on a nice day. It's more fun doing muzzle loading videos, getting all those accoutrements out and the powder when it's oh above 60. Yeah, if it's around 70, that's ideal, you know, as far as enjoying that. And uh, so, got some of that kind of stuff coming up. And uh, got some videos that we uh, kind of stockpiled through the winter. And uh, get some, uh, some stuff I'm anxious to get posted. Some AR stuff. Don't cry when you see it. Hopefully, we don't have too many snowflakes watching. And uh, you won't get upset if you see an AR uh, or an AK video posted. There's still a couple of my favorite firearms. So uh, a lot of that coming up and we're gonna continue doing what we do. Uh, the politics of it all, you know, is something we wanna talk about and ramble about occasionally. Uh, most of you don't need reminding of, of that, but uh, there are some young people, maybe 19, 20, 21, you know, that watch these perhaps and just encourage you to, to, to get political to the point where it's necessary. You know, I, I saw a comment today on video. Someone said, love your videos uh, and uh, the fact you, you're not political all the time. You're not political or whatever. Well, we're not too much. But again, if you own a firearm, you're kind of in the political soup to a, to a point, aren't you? So, you know, you better be voting. I mean, if you like the firearm, if you enjoy owning it, you had better be political to a point. If you young people plan to own firearms, you think you're gonna enjoy it as a hobby, and maybe right now you're still in school and you're not into it yet, well, uh, you may not like politics, but guess what? You're gonna thrust yourself into politics to some extent because about half the politicians in the country and about half the people in the country, uh, look at the voting, right? Don't want you to own that firearm. They would like for you not to own it. They would like to take it away from you after you buy it. That's about simple as I can, I can put it. So you need to be aware of that and you need to be voting and be political you know, to that extent. That's, that's why we talk about politics some and not party politics, but the politics of gun ownership and uh, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights is uh, it's very, very important stuff. You know? And again, Constitution, the Bill of Rights is not about hunting. It, I guess it is about personal defense, you know, uh, but it, you know, mainly it was uh, put in there for people to protect themselves against tyrannical, tyrannical governments. You know, that's what, you know, the founding fathers had in mind. And, uh, you know, and of course the left likes to, yeah, right, you're going to be shooting down Apache helicopters with your lever gun or even your AR-15. No, no, it's never going to come to that because too many of us are going to make sure we're always armed so it'll never come to that it would never come to that and it would be way down the road if i mean that would take a long time uh, for that to be a situation but uh hey if a uh, citizenry is unarmed they're at the mercy of the government whatever the government wants to do it's uh it's it's been true all through world history and even though our system of government 
would guard against that more than most others, it's still, look at the politicians. A lot of politicians really seem to want to be dictators, right? Yeah, even under our system. If you get the IRS, you get the FBI on your side, uh, you know, you can almost do that, can't you? I mean, you know, I sound like a conspiracy theorist here, but uh, we're better off armed, let's put it that way, okay? We're just better off armed, and things will go more smoothly for the next 100, 200, 500,000 years. That's, that's my uh, belief. So you got to be political to a point if you're going to be a gun owner. You are political. You are in politics if you own a gun. And uh, if you don't believe me, when you get your gun, if you don't have it yet, uh, and some politician proposes some gun ban that covers the gun you just bought that you really like, you will uh, not be happy, and it will happen. So anyway, I can't think of anything else to ramble about, so I'll talk to you later. Glad you came by here and you spent time with me in the woods. Uh, guess I got fired up about some stuff, you know, today. Uh, sorry about that. Um, hopefully I didn't put my foot in my mouth. My foot's really too big to go in my mouth anyway. It's a size 16, so that doesn't mean I can't put my foot in my mouth figuratively, you know. And when you think about all the rambling I have done over the last 10 years on video, it's a miracle I haven't put my foot in my mouth more times than I have. So anyway, appreciate you all watching. Appreciate you, uh, you know, following us on Facebook and, you know, and on the videos and, uh, you know, Full 30 and, and everything and supporting the people that support us. Uh, we are enjoying still what we do a great deal. We made some range changes. We've got some additions and, uh, and a couple of new series we're, we're going to be uh, doing. You've seen one of them, you know, with the small animal hunts. So it's kind of neat, kind of fun. And we're going to continue doing the stuff we've been doing. Because uh, guess what? We like to shoot. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Life is good.